Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mupo and Friends. We are Emanuela Messina. And I am Michelle Mupo. And we're brought to you all by Mupo TV. And you can catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And if you want a career in the industry, you want to just hang out with us, volunteer at the events we have, go to mupoentertainment.com. And stay tuned because this show is rocking. I have to say, we've always had guests that tell us things that they've never told us before. And I'm hoping this one does too, because um, this one's going to be a real, a real, a real exciting one. It is. And it's funny because it, it goes back from even my childhood of watching the show and having it transition over to what it is today. So I'm excited about this guest as well. And you are so right when you say they share things here exclusively on Mupo and Friends, especially the last couple that we've interviewed. It was them that said, I've never shared this before or great question. Nobody's asked me. And then we ended up asking and they told us here first exclusively. So it's really cool to see that actually happen uh, here on Mupo and Friends. And we just want to say thank you all to joining us where we love to bring you all the celebrities and the entrepreneurs you guys all want to know about. Hey. Yeah. Download this app, Mupo Entertainment. It's on Android or iOS. Hey, do you have a copy of the magazine that you could show? I do. Because we have a magazine too, and it's still for sale. It's quarterly, and the new one coming out is going to be awesome. It's got Kimberly Meredith on it. It's got a bunch of people. We have a couple surprise uh, interviews in there. I'm not going to, you know, shout it out, but they're going to be surprised. And don't forget, you could also watch us on Roku and Fire Stick if you want to, but make sure you download the app, watch it from the app, because that's how we can do the Sims on it, you know? Mm, That's so true. And make sure you do it. But after Move on Friends, make sure you download the app and then you can watch all the ones that we've done in the past as well, the interviews. So I'm going to ask you the question that I love asking you every single week. Did you have a Mupo awesome week? I did. You know what's really funny? Um, Mm -hmm. I got to meet uh, Jessica Lowndes, who basically is was one of my favorite actresses on, um, you know, the newer version of the 90210. And, Mm -hmm. you know, she's got a beautiful voice, too. But, uh, you know, I just have to tell you, if you guys go to our website, and you see a picture of me saying, hey, have you tried this yet? The happy juice, this happy juice, I put it in this flask and it is unbelievable. If you like grape, um, if you, I have the grape and I have the pomegranate. And um, so I mix them together. But let me just tell you something. It goes from the gut to the brain. Now, I just want to tell you. I have, if I have no energy when I wake up or like I'm exhausted, it's probably because I'm having an outer body experience or whatever. But when I'm not kidding, as soon as I take this, if you've ever grown up and had one of those little, they come in three packs. One of them has a little sugar stick. And then there's two things of sugar. Usually it's grape or cherry. Mm. Well, I got to tell you, it tastes better. This tastes better than that. Oh, wow. Mm. It's a flash from the past of my childhood too, right there. I loved those. No, candies. it's like the edges. Oh my God. I just love it. That's and so I just good. did a little, I just, you know, and if you go on our website and you see where it says, Hey, have you tried this yet? Click on it. Uh, it'll tell you about the products. Yeah. It is a great product. So are we ready to rock and roll on this interview? We really I are. Am. I'm excited. I'm really <laughs> excited. And you know what? The, the, what's really cool? Like he's, you know, like I've seen him grow up on the show and it's just, he's, he's really good looking. He's a really good looking kid. He God is. Bless. You know? He is. Well, he's big not a future. kid, he's a man. He's a man. He's got a big future ahead of him. That's for sure. So he does. And he's talented. Like you would not believe. And I know you guys are in suspense, but we're going to take a quick commercial <laughs> break. and We'll be right back with our special guest.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Mupo and Friends. And our special guest today is an actor on both stage and screen, as well as a magician and junior member of the prestigious Magic Castle in Hollywood. Performing in theater by the time he was six, he has also appeared on stage productions of The Wizard of Oz, Annie, and The Little Mermaid, just to name a few. And he's Jackson Fuller from the hit Netflix series Fuller House and Theo from Red Ruby on YouTube's Brat TV. Please welcome Michael Campion. Hello, Michael, and how are you? Hi, Hello. Michael. I'm very I'm, good. I'm excited because I'm a fan of Fuller House and the Fuller House. You know what I mean? Full House and the Fuller House, I should say. So how sure. did the audition happen? Like, did you get it instantly because you're just so talented? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, really funny story about that. Uh, I was not the original Jackson. Um, there was a, a a second. Actually, how the audition process went is I was in Florida. Uh, I live in Florida. Well, I, I used to live in Florida. I moved out to L.A., but uh, I got an audition like I normally would. They didn't tell me the title. They kept that under wraps. And I did the audition. They got they liked it. I got a call back. Did another audition. I got another call back and they told me the title. I was like, this is Fuller House, like the sequel to Full House. That's crazy. And then I did another audition and they said, sorry, someone else got it, but you were really close. And I was like, oh, all right. Hey, you know, that happens sometimes. What are you going to do? And so I was at my acting studio doing a completely separate audition when my mom was in the lobby and she got an email from the producers saying that, Hey, original Jackson, like this was like, a, this is like a week after. Hey, original Jackson, like is, isn't working out. Like we want Michael to audition like right now. Like, can he send a tape right now? And we were like, oh, oh ah, ah. and so we went down to Walmart, got a change of clothes. I came back and I did my audition with my acting coach. I was, I was conveniently in the acting studio at the time. And then literally the next morning, they're like, okay, that was great. Can Michael fly out to Warner Brothers right now? We want to see him like if, to do like a screen test. So within like 24 hours, I was completely turned around. And then right then and there in the room, they told me that I got the part. So I was pretty... I mean, it was a pretty like wild thing. So That's beautiful. Yeah. That's incredible. And so what did it feel like to join the cast of like a show that's already been so familiar uh, with each other? It it was really great because there was no weird stuff. I feel like getting right into the cast, they were really, um, they really excited to have us. And they were also very kind and understanding because they were in our shoes and so i i'm i'm very surprised because i know that a lot of um tv shows tend to have a lot of like drama on set but there was pretty much none the whole time we were all like a very big family and we all genuinely liked each other loved each other and and when you got the part of jackson right because you got it pretty young did you um like how do I word this? You had a drastic change in your life. You had to like what happened? Did your friends started to treat you different or? Well, I was 12 when I got the part. And then actually on my on the week of my 13th birthday was when I got it. So I was turning 13 on set, which was a crazy birthday present. But um, luckily, my best friends were actors. And so they were very understanding of like the magnitude of this and very supportive. Um, so they weren't like weird. They, 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 they were very nice about it. And um, as for being treated different, I obviously was treated different by lots of people because, you know, uh, people who don't really understand the industry think that Hollywood's like this insane thing. And then like, I'm this like crazy guy now and people coming out of the woodworks just to like, you know, be not necessarily friends with me, but like to be like, Oh, that's Michael Campion. Like I know him. And I never, I, I was so oblivious to, to the fact that that was even going to happen in the first place because I only, I've ever only seen acting as like, Oh, this is just something I love doing. I never thought I was going to, you know, get like really famous off of it. I knew that that was the not really famous, but I mean, like, you know, be in the in the public eye. So I definitely life did change. Friends didn't really treat me that different, but a lot of people were trying to be my friend. And for the most part, my favorite part of all everything that changed was being able to 
talk to fans and interact with people who really like the show, who um, I could just make their day by just talking to them. I mean, sometimes they, they'd be, uh, it, you know, on the charity end of stuff, like me being able to go to charities and people who really liked Fuller House and, you know, just my presence there was enough for them to get like really happy. That that was the most mind blowing thing to me was that I could just like talk to them and, and they'd love it. That's amazing. I love that. And happy 13th birthday on that one. That was <laughs> yeah. incredible. So tell me, were you happy with the ending of Fuller House? I, to be honest with you, I I wasn't as happy as I thought I was going to be because I, I liked, I liked the whole deal they had with the wedding and everything. Uh, at the very last bit, they, they go like, ah, Kimmy's just going to move back in. Everything's going to be fine. And I went, oh, come on. But, uh, I understand why they did it. They didn't want to completely close out any future, I don't know, fullest house and, 30 years <laughs> and they need to bring it back they should have never ended it that way personally because people were watching it and we all got drawn to it like when you're watching you know a show like that you feel like you're part of the family i mean and then when it ends you're like you're heartbroken because it ended mm. i mean it, it's yeah that show is just the show of a century you know what i mean and do you keep in touch with anyone still from the show yeah absolutely um it it was strange because we were keeping in touch a lot more um, well, we didn't really keep in touch a lot during the pandemic. Everyone just like went in their own little islands and because like we couldn't really see each other. We would text each other occasionally. But as soon as we got out of that, I mean, we've all definitely been hanging out more. Uh, but it's just everyone is just so scattered right now. I think that like at least six of us are in different states. So, um, yeah, but we have been keeping in touch occasionally when we're in the same place. We'll we'll go to meet up. We'll have lunch. We'll we'll talk. It's yeah, we're on Bye. great terms. Right. And how much of like relying on family, a part of your own life, like the characters in Fuller House? I'm sorry. I, what was how, the much, how much is relying on family, a part of your own life, like the characters on Fuller House? Oh, definitely. I, I wouldn't be anywhere without my parents, my, my whole family, really. But my mom and my dad sacrificed so much to be out here with me and because they had lives back in Florida. I mean, they pretty much, I mean, was my mom mostly, she had to pack up and, you know, come stay out here with me because my dad ran two businesses. I mean, I can only imagine what, what that's like to just, you know, not have your kid there all the time and also being split up, you know, all the time. It's, it's really difficult. So um, the fact that they did any of that, I so would not be where I am right now without their, major sacrifices and not only that but they were very supportive of me acting anyways and you know now that i'm out here on my own i i i'm not with them physically but that's okay it's, i feel like i'm in college right now so they're very understanding of that too and i'm i'm just really lucky to have two parents who really get it and are supportive of me and were they fans of full of full house the original yeah actually my Did my he? mom yeah, surprisingly, my mom was the one who introduced me to uh, Full Full House because we would watch it on uh, like Nick at Night. Oh, my light just fell. <laughs> uh, we, we would watch it on Nick at Night and uh, I'd watch like Friends and George Lopez and all that. You know, you know what Nick at Night is, you know, what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm old, but I'm not that old. No. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I, I don't know. Sometimes I say like, well. no, but um, so. How did you feel when you totally switched genres going from a sitcom to a supernatural drama, Red Ru uh, Ruby Red? Uh, Red? Red Ruby, yeah. Oh, um, Red, Red Ruby, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, Red Ruby, yeah. So uh, that was, I filmed that during my off time uh, because we, we have these hiatuses. And uh, to be honest with you, I was not prepared for it. <laughs> like, I... I realized that at the end of when, when Fuller House ended as well, that I started auditioning for dramatic things that had more range than a sitcom. And I was like, whoa, I'm not good. Like, t like genuinely, that's that's what I said. I felt like I did not have the range to like pull these things off. And actually, right after that, I, I was talking to 
um, one of the one of my castmates from Fuller House. Uh, he plays Jimmy. His name is Adam Hagenbu, and he's my favorite ever. He's my favorite on set. He's my favorite to work with because he like gets acting on a completely different level that I never considered before. And so he was giving giving me recommendations and like tell me more about acting. And so I I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a school right now, um, and I've been doing that for two years, which has been really really helpful in terms of like expanding that range. But to, to be honest with you, sorry, going back to your question, uh, I, I, I didn't feel like I was ready to do that. And I don't like my performance. I know I'm being like really critical of that, but I, I don't like it as much. Uh, show turned out great. I mean, I, I, I know a lot of people liked it and, but I just know for myself, if I, if I had a few more years, I would have been, I wish I could have gone back and did it again. Mm. There's always there's always a future. So you never you know, you never know. You may come back as a, you know, the next Aquaman or something. You never know. I And just want to let you know, it's not me like putting myself down in terms of like, oh, that was terrible. But uh, just. Always, always looking to improve is is the way that I'm love it. I see things. Yeah, we are, too. We're always looking to improve and we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with our special guest. Mufo and friends with Michael Campion. And I want to know what led you to developing an interest in magic. What led me to develop an interest in magic? Um, so the the very first time I encountered magic was when I was eight years old. Uh, my aunt and uncle, uh, they used to be professional clowns for Ringling Brothers. And they got me my first magic kit. And I thought that was the coolest thing on the planet. Like wow. I, I, I would do the, like the little, the little stuff, like, like that crap little vase with the ball in it. And <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was so crazy to me. And, um, they're actually fun fact. They, uh, they're Santa and Mrs. Claus professionally now. Like he's got a big old, big old beard. Nice. They, they, they go around mm-hmm. during the holidays and do that. They do it for Disney actually in Florida. Um, Super cool. But yeah, I come from a very magical family in general. Like my mom, she's the fairy godmother uh, at Disney World. Um, and so I've, I have a lot of performers in my family who are very supportive of that kind of thing. And um, right after I started learning how to do magic, I went to this local magic shop who did like magic camps. They were called uh, the Magic Dove. And it was for kids like eight to 12. And I, I went there and at the end of it, we had like a little show and I just, I absolutely fell in love. It's, I fell in love with it uh, just because it was another avenue for me to perform. And also there's something so raw about having a person right there with you and you're doing something live. Like I've always liked theater and, and, and things that someone can experience right there with you. Um, so that's that's really why I love it so much. But uh, for a time, I actually dropped out of it for like, I don't know, like five years because I, I wasn't I don't know. I just I was doing Fuller House. I was I was preoccupied with other things. So can you do something for us now? Can I do something for you now? You know, I'm, it really I wish we were live right now because I, I always have something on me, but zoom is such like a it's such a difficult thing and so that like like the amount of zoom tricks that i know are so are so limited and also in my opinion not the best representation of what i can do so we can go live on ig we'll have to set a date to do that because you i'm trying to see what you got i i love my same I would be more than happy to do something for you guys. Uh, like in, in a live situation, I, I, I would be more than happy. All right. Well, I'm going to set it up. Let's do it. Yeah, we have to. I'm down. Oh, I'm excited about that now. I can't wait to see it. But I wanna, <laughs> I'm just curious to know, is there any difference in the process of creating a show for Netflix and one for YouTube? 
Um, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, well, the filming process was pretty much the same, but in terms of like how fast things went and the budget for it and uh, the, the, the feeling was a lot different, but not necessarily like the actual nuts and bolts of it. Because it was so, like a professional set. Were you ever starstruck when you got on stage? I mean, when you were on the set? I was the very first time that I walked onto Warner Brothers lot and I went over to my trailer. The very first person that I met was uh, Andrea Barber, the one who plays Kimmy. And she came up to me and she like shook my hand and said, hi, I'm Andrea. And I looked over to my mom and she left. I'm like, that was Kimmy Gibbler. Like that's crazy <laughs> right now that she was like, just came up and talked to me. And <laughs> that, that was, I think that's the very first time I remember like being starstruck, but I've definitely, I've definitely been starstruck like with lots of people. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't go away when you're, when you're. Uh... Now, let me ask you another question. Do you meet more people famous in Florida or California? Because if you came to Jersey, you would meet a lot of famous people here. I would say L.A. by a long shot. I or, Orlando doesn't really I, I like you don't just go into the world and, you know, see famous people walking around. But I, I could I literally walked down the street the other day and there's Ron Perlman walking into a, a restaurant. Nice. And I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that is really cool. Um, <laughs> so what do you do when you're not acting or making any magic? I do. I do a lot of things, actually. Um what are, what are like my, my main things I do? Main thing is definitely acting. Uh, I have the acting school. Magic, I, I, I work in the Magic Castle. But outside of that, I um, I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends. I, I'm, nice. I'm in the Dungeon Master. I'm, I make the whole game. Uh, I, li I like writing a lot. So that's something that, that goes into it too. Um, I, oh man, what, what else? What else do I do? I like to cook a lot. I also uh, am a big fan of reading. I, I, I read quite a bit. And I mean, those are just like little hobbies I do. But besides that, oh, I'm completely forgetting about this whole other domain. Um, I am very, I'm, I'm very much into uh, what, what you consider like hacking uh, in terms of like computer hacking and and also uh like lock picking like very magiciany like 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 learning how to break into things for educational purposes uh that's <laughs> that, that's always fascinated me um all, I've, I've always wanted to get a job as one of those guys who gets hired to break in to companies from the company so they can <laughs> like find out where their like vulnerabilities are yeah, where their mole is or something yeah. sure yeah that's yeah. always like 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 a pseudo spy. I would love to do that someday. I I've been to a lot of like hacker conventions. Um, I actually participated in like a, in like a, in like a hacking contest. I got fourth place with that. So oh, I complete, complete forgot yeah. about all that, but yeah, that, that takes up some of my time too. The legal stuff guys. He said it here. Okay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> in the gray area. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a commercial break and a break and we're going to be right back. Michael Campion and I'm you know I just want to know because I know you're very talented so having a theater background are you ever going to revisit that and go back to theater like maybe go on Broadway or I actually did a theater production right before COVID hit um and it was called uh it's called Snow White Christmas and I it, it was for a theater company called um the the Lithgow family they, they they put on this British style of theater it's called a panto a pantomime and I got a, I got a chance to play the prince it was a musical so I, I was the prince in Snow White pretty much uh it's right. something that, that they do during like Christmas time uh they're doing another one this year it was the Wizard of Oz and is uh super cool um 
So yeah, I love theater. I would go right back to it if I if I had the chance. And do you put shows on for your parents and friends when you were little? Didn't I put shows on? Absolutely. You mean like like magic shows or just like anything? Yeah, little acting shows, magic shows, just whatever came to you to start performing. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I feel like I do that more now than I ever did before with <laughs> with Dungeons and Dragons because that that literally feels like I'm putting on a very small theater production and it's awesome because I get to write whatever I want. Uh, I'm like acting with my friends because we're all actors. I play with actors. So we take it very seriously. And um, <laughs> and <laughs> it's it's awesome. Uh, I never really did it from my parents, uh, but I would do it a lot with my with my friends. We would do stuff like with each other all the time. Nice. Yeah. Must be the Italian in you, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. What would like, obviously, if there was no restrictions, what would be your dream project? My dream project. Oh, man. If you were to ask me like five years ago, I would say that I wanted to be a villain in some kind of like Mission Impossible movie, which I still absolutely would love to do like or or just like some some way that I get to be a villain that is awesome to me some like super charismatic guy one day that would be great but if i'm being more realistic in terms of what i want to do really that is to really expand my range and break out of fuller house sitcom world um i i really want to do a um I really want to do a TV show, like a dramatic TV show, something like like Breaking Bad or or a, or a movie that um, uh, just really shows the range that I feel like I'm I'm capable of now. Uh, something that I I really resonate with. I couldn't tell you what that is exactly. I would love for it to be an action movie, but I I've, I would want it to just whatever it is that really shows my range. All Very right. Cool. We're yeah. putting that out in the universe because I'm writing something <laughs> right now that I was putting Jay. I, I want Jason Momoa in, and I can actually see you in it too. Mm -hmm. mm, you never know. You never you know. Never well, know. Sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you about flying. So how did you become interested in flying, and have you taken any flying lessons yet? Oh man, I wow, I completely. <laughs> I remember saying that like a couple times on, on an interview, but I realized that uh, when, when I went to go, when I was considering doing flying lessons, that was like right before the pandemic had hit. And so I was like, yeah, this is great. I have some extra money. I love to like pick up a really cool skill. And also I, my, my um, grandpa was a pilot and uh, I, I've, had, I've had a lot of pilots in my family. My, my dad was a helicopter pilot. He was a part of the DEA and I would, I just wanted to get my license just to say, not only that I had it, but if I really needed to like do something with it, it would have been awesome. But, um, I just realized two things that one, that was going to take up so much of my time that I wasn't going to be able to like really invest as much like as I wanted to in acting. Cause it's like a, it's like a program you got to go through. Mm -hmm. And, uh, also a lot of money and that was, you know, getting tight during like pandemic time. So I realized that, I. I would love to revisit it in the future. If I, if I have a lot of like money down the line and I have a lot of time, that would be great. That's something I'm totally interested in, but um, it just felt more like a, like, like a hobby that I, I had the time and money for at, at the, at the moment. So. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe you're going to play a role where you're a pilot and then you get to have that experience of flying. You could always get John Travolta to, to teach. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure he true. Would yeah he's, I was he's hearing all about that. Yeah, yeah. Top so Gun three. <laughs> yeah. And tell us about, do you have any future projects coming up? I wish I did, but for now, I, I like I said, I'm, I, I'm in this acting school right now. So that's been taking up a lot of my time. So I've been on this pseudo break. I've been auditioning for everything that's been coming my way, but in terms of like making stuff or going out of my way to like, you know, write a project it's it's been on the down low because i'm gonna i'm gonna graduate uh in, in the beginning of february so once that's done yeah. i i'm i'm full blast but not right, right now 
Yeah. Right on. And we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back with the conclusion of our interview with Michael Campion. back with Michael Campion. And before we wrap things up, we have one last question. Since you love learning random stuff, what is the last random thing you've learned? <laughs> the last random thing that I learned. What is the last random thing I learned? Um, oh man, there's all sorts of random things I've learned. They, they all, they all tend to jumble together in my head. Uh, what is the last random thing that I learned? Some, some notable, I mean, I need to go through this in my head. Some notable things, some notable random things I've learned. Uh, um, juggling, playing the bass, lock picking. Um, oh, man. Uh, oh, I, I know what it is. I, I I learned how to do a little coin in between my hands like this, like a little magician oh, nice. move. Wow. That, 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 that was something that I, that I, uh, yeah, yeah. I just picked that up the other day, actually. Very cool. There you go. Yeah. yeah. There you, there go. you go. That's amazing. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure visiting with you today. Please look for Michael Campion in Red Ruby Season 1 uh, and RoboDog on 2BTV.com, RoboDog Airborne on Amazon Prime, and Fuller House Seasons 1 through 5 on Netflix. You can also follow, like, and subscribe to Michael Campion on Twitter at underscore Michael Campion on Instagram at Michael Campion and on TikTok at Michael Campion with a double N at the end. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Mupo and Friends, courtesy of Mupo TV. And you can catch this show and many others at www.mupotv.com. That's www.mupotv.com. And also catch us on Roku, Fire Stick, and make sure you download our app on Android and iOS. And don't forget to get the Mupo magazine, by the way. That's right. And this is Emanuela with our host, Michelle Mupo. And until next time, have a Mupo awesome week. 